In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you guys to one of the most picturesque spots here in Zion National Park, and that is the subway. Now, the subway is a really awesome hike, um, but it's not for the faint of heart. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the hike itself, and then I also wanna talk about the photography aspect of it. So whether you're just a hiker here looking to pick up some knowledge before your trip, or you're a photographer that wants to capture great photos of this place, uh, this is gonna be the video for you. Or if you just wanna be entertained by some beautiful scenery in Zion here in the spring, uh, this should be great. So I'm really excited. Now it is of course important to note before we start here that the subway is a permitted hike. You need to get a permit in order to do it. You can do that via online um, and Zion does permits like seven months in advance, I believe it is. And then they do last minute permits as well. So if you're planning a trip to Zion, you know you wanna do it, apply the seven months in advance. If you're a last minute person or you're local, uh, like I am, then you can just do the last minute lottery, which is like two to seven days before your trip. But you do need to have a permit. You cannot go here without a permit from the park service. Super important, please do not come here without a permit. Now, if you just buy your first pair of hiking boots or you're a photographer that doesn't usually like to hike, this is probably not the hike for you. Um, now, for the person that hikes all the time that's used to off-trail scrambling and stuff like that, it's not too challenging. But if you don't do a lot of hiking, this is a little different than your traditional hike because we're hiking up this creek bed. Now, this creek has a lot of water in it, so we, we're going upstream, so we're going to be in and out of the water. For today's hike, I'm wearing neoprene socks. Depending on the time of year, you may want a wetsuit or a dry suit or just bottoms or whatever. Other times of year where the water's really low, you can get pretty much all the way to the subway without even getting your feet wet until the very, very end. So um, just know that this is not a super easy hike. It starts off with a nice big uh, decline, a, a drop where you're actually doing some rock scrambling, uh, which is a little bit challenging just because you're going down and you gotta be careful. But the worst part is probably coming back at the end of your hike because you're gonna be in the sun. It's gonna be the afternoon. You're gonna be going up that and it's gonna be super hot. So also bring lots of water. Now, much of the hike looks like this, where you're just going to be walking through the brush. There is a little bit of a scratch trail, but you got to do a bunch of crossing the creek, and you're going to have to make decisions about when you want to cross the creek yourself. Um, and so if you're not used to doing something like that, bring a friend that is, uh, just because there's definitely a method to the madness here of where to cross the creek. Right now, the water is pretty high. It's May here after a huge snow year here in southern Utah and all of Utah and all of the west coast i guess um but the water is pretty high like i said a lot of times it's not as high it'd be less challenging when the water is a little bit lower but this is what we're working with today uh, i'm really excited to photograph it at high water but like normally i've been here enough times that i remember usually you can just walk right through here to where that trail is without even getting your feet wet obviously right now you're probably gonna have to get your feet wet to get there so the water is pretty high know that um, but know that depending on the time of year that you go the water is going to be higher or lower all right, so let's talk photography gear because uh, that's what I'm doing here. So you certainly will want to have a tripod because you're going to want to do some long exposure. Coming up here, I'm going to shoot both of the popular spots, which the first one is this really cool uh, like waterfall where there's like slick rock coming down. I believe that's called Archangel Falls. And then, of course, after that is the subway, which is your photogenic spot that everyone's out hiking to. For both of them, I'm going to want to do a long exposure. So it's important that I have a tripod. Um, the other thing that you absolutely want is a polarizer. It's gonna help you so much to cut through the glare and allow you to see exactly what you're looking at in your photos. So make sure you grab a polarizer as well. Uh, you guys can see how it's like ducking and bobbing and weaving there is on this hike, but bring your polarizer as well. Um, other than that, wide angle lens is really nice. If you're shooting on a full frame, I like something about 14, 18 millimeters. Um, and on a crop sensor, I'll let you do the math yourself. Uh, so that's pretty much all the photography gear that you need to bring. Of course, bring lots of snacks, lots of water. Uh, today here in May, it is getting a little warm. It's kind of the middle of May. I've got like two and a half liters. I don't drink a lot of water. Um, and that's probably a little bit overkill, but better to be overkill than underkill and good training to put the extra weight on your back. So make sure you bring enough water, make sure you bring snacks, your first aid kit, all that good stuff. And like I said, neoprene socks uh, are a must almost all year, if not wetsuit bottoms or dry suit bottoms.
Now, probably the first thing you're gonna come across that's gonna be look interesting for photography is this little, there's like slick rock and water running over it. Now, you, this is not Archangel Falls. I like to call this far, fake Archangel Falls uh, because it's not the same. Now, it does look pretty cool, but Archangel Falls is just a little bit further upstream. It looks a lot cooler for photography. Uh, so don't spend, if you wanna shoot this, that's fine, but don't spend a lot of time here because there's better spots upstream. You've got a long day in the king and ahead of you, and you don't wanna spend a bunch of time shooting this, which is probably not one of the most interesting features, but it is very cool to check out. Get a little water break, snack break, whatever you need, check it out and then keep moving. Now, one thing to be ready for, because you might not be expecting it, I know I didn't the first time I came, even though this is like, you're walking on the riverside, there's so much up and down because you're going up and over rocks and boulders and stuff like that. So there's actually quite a bit of elevation gain and loss, even though in the long run, there's not that much total, but because of the way that the trail is, like maybe you can see, Right now, I'm pretty, I would say I'm probably 50 feet up from the river, which like 50 feet is nothing. But if you think about it, I'm going up 50 feet, down 50 feet, up 50 feet, down 50 feet, over and over and over and over again. So this hike will wear you down uh, if you're not in good shape. So do be aware that even though it's a riverside walk, it's not something like say the narrows where you can just walk in the water the whole time and avoid going up and down. So do be aware. Then after quite a bit of walking, you will reach the real Archangel Falls. It was a terrible pan, but that's all right. You can see it now. Here it is. So I'm going to do some photography here. I'll talk you guys through while I'm shooting. If you can even hear me, it's pretty loud here. Um, the, the waterfall kind of goes around the corner. So I'm going to shoot all of it here and I'll show you guys what I'm shooting and what I'm doing. Let me get my camera stuff out and we'll be back. All right, well, I'm trying lots of different things here, but for a shot like this, the shutter speed is so crucial. What I really like about this composition here is this water pouring off is actually creating a beautiful, beautiful scene. Maybe I'll show you the photo on screen here, uh, but your shutter speed is so important. You know, if your shutter speed is too fast, then your photo is simply not gonna look good because the water is going to look blurry as opposed to silky smooth. So for a shot like this, uh, with this much water coming down, I'm shooting at about a third or a fourth of a second. Uh, F10 uh, with the polarizer on. Now the polarizer is crucial to this shot because what it does is it cuts the glare off of things like this. So let me turn the polarizer here and maybe you can see it, but you can see just how much glare there is. Sorry, I'm, I'm standing in the water here, I'm, I'm struggling. But the difference between unpolarized and polarized is all this extra color and glare, uh, or all the glare is gonna be cut down so that you can see that extra color. The trees are gonna look a little bit nicer. Um, and I would recommend trying a lot of different compositions. Now, of course, you can shoot something up here a little bit higher. I like to get low and close to the water. Uh, it gives you a little more impact, I think, when you're down low. Only thing I don't like about this shot is over here is kind of boring. I do wanna try and scope out right here. Uh, so I'm gonna move the camera up there and then we'll see how that looks up there. Of course, you wanna try a bunch of different shots to find the one that you really like. Don't just shoot one shot and be done. Grab a few different compositions to see what you like. So I wasn't really a big fan of the shot from up there. I just shot one. There's just like too much water, not enough going on in the background. Um, but if you had like a wider lens, maybe you could get it up there. I'm shooting uh, 17 is the widest I've got with me right now. So now I'm just standing up here shooting some shots. I kind of like this wider landscape because I can capture the whole falls as well as the trees in the background here, which are beautiful and some nice orange rock in the back and the green just contrasts so incredibly well. Now you wanna make sure when you're shooting this, especially if you get up close, that you're doing a focus stack where you are adjusting your focus point and focusing on multiple spots in the image so that you can blend them all back together. This is especially important in the shot you saw me shooting earlier where I was up really close up here. When I'm further back here, it doesn't matter as much. I like shooting somewhere between F8 and F10. Um, I just adjust that usually depending on how long I want my shutter speed to be. I'm finding for this particular waterfall that a third of a second is just perfect. Now the other thing that I'm looking for, uh, and I'll walk a little bit closer to show you guys here. I'm looking for water in the foreground when I'm shooting those up close shots like this water here. Can you see how it's kind of coming over smooth and clean 
uh, which gives you a really nice looking photo. Whereas when we have some water like this water over here, which I tried to shoot, it's much more difficult to get a good shot because it's not coming over clean. You can see it's like splashing everywhere. That makes it really hard to get a good photo. Your photos aren't gonna look as good of water like this as it will of this water down here where it's coming over clean. Cause you can see uh, there's not any splash right here. Because this has so many tears, there's so much splash, it's hard to get a great photo. So that's why I'm shooting this in the foreground. Why I was thinking maybe I could get right there and get a good shot, but it's just simply not wide enough. So after you're done shooting, continue onwards. You're really close to the subway. You can try and find the trail again. Or my favorite is to just walk right up the waterfall, which can sometimes be slippery. And depending on how much water there is, may be easier or harder, but it's definitely the most fun to walk up the waterfall here. And man, you can see it, it's just beautiful out here. So we're almost at the subway, we'll touch base when we get there. Right after that falls, you'll see this falls. Quite scenic. Uh, you can see, whoa, super slippery. Uh, weird, usually it's not slippery in here, but for some reason right now in the spring, seems there's like a little a bit of algae on the rocks. But anyways, you can see just how cool it is in here. Uh, but honestly, it's not that scenic until you get to the end. So I'm right by the subway now. That's where there's all the cool stuff, but there's no notion of like, oh, I'll just go a little bit of the way and get to see something cool. Because to be honest with you, the first part of the hike is not that exciting and it's not really that fun. Uh, so you gotta go all the way. If you wanna get to the great spots. And the last, you will reach this view. This right here is the subway. I've seen a lot of photographers try and shoot from back here. It looks all right, but to be honest, I would just go straight in if you have time. Get photos from out here on your way out. But the subway is so cool that you don't wanna to have to cut your photography time short. And at the same time, you don't wanna be spending so much time shooting photos out here that you're either hiking out in the dark or if you're hiking in the late spring, early summer, like I am hiking out with the risk of the afternoon flash flood. So I would just get right in here, shoot your photos. And then if you have time, hit some shots on the way out because this is by far the most photogenic spot. And this is of course what you're coming for. And oh man, look at these flowers, beautiful. So, all right. We'll get set up in here and I will show you guys what I'm looking at and the spots I like to shoot. All right, we are here. This is the most water I've ever seen coming through here, which is kind of why I came out today because there is definitely a different photo opportunity when there's high water. Now, when there's high water like this, the pool is not gonna be emerald blue or green like you see it in photos. That you're, If you want that, you're gonna have to go in a time where the water's not high, there's not a lot of runoff and the water's low because all this brown is from like dirt and stuff coming downstream. So you can see there's like three little waterfalls here. Normally, there's only one uh, when the water is lower. And normally what I'm on right now is this is usually uh, not in the water. So you have this big pool here, but you have this little bridge you can walk across. So right now it's underwater. Uh, it's a cool shot from right here. It's a little bit sketchy to walk across this because if you fall that way, you're swimming. And if you fall this way, you're also swimming. And you have your camera gear. And when the water is this high, there's nowhere to put your stuff. A lot of times, like I said, right here, uh, there won't be water. So you can put your bag down. Right now I have my bag leaning against this rock with my leg holding it up to get my stuff out. And you can see there's like no other better spot to put your stuff in here. So do keep that in mind if you come during high water. A little more challenging for photography, but I like having more water in my photo. So anyways, I am shooting right here. Uh, and right now I am shooting this wide angle. I, I wish I had like a 14 cause it would work a little better for this, but I'm capturing this water down here with the subway back here. This is shot number one. You can get low, you can take it high, however you want. Uh, it's gonna look good a variety of different ways. The other shot is right here, uh, which I will show you that shot in just a second. I'm gonna wrap up what I'm shooting here. Again, the polarizer is so important. Um, and I'm gonna wrap up what I'm shooting here and then I'll show you what it looks like from over here. Now shot number two is from right here, which is just kind of your classic view. This is where I was standing before. Uh, I shot this on my camera. I'll show you the photos on screen. I've already put my camera away though. It was just a little too sketchy to handle the camera and the GoPro at the same time for a shot that I knew wasn't gonna turn out that great anyways. Now when the water is lower, this is a lot better shot I think than over there. When the water is higher, I like over there. 
When it's lower, the nice thing is you can get right here a little easier and get all of that water moving in the foreground, which right now would be really hard to do with how much water is coming down. But when you can stand like right there a lot easier, it does look a little slippery right now. Uh, and right now it's just not a good idea to get in there. But if you could get in there when the water gets lower, that's also a nice shot to shoot straight into the subway just like that. So as you can see, a lot of great options here for photography um, and the, the possibilities are endless. Make sure you bring a polarizer. That's the biggest thing. And since it also might be helpful for you guys, I'll show you the difference between high water and low water and the different kind of photography that you can capture. I've been out here all seasons. Understand that each season brings its own challenges, uh, both hiking and for photography. So do understand that before you come out here. This trip is like a middle of May trip on a high snowpack year. So the water's high, the water's cold, and you can see what kind of photos that I got with it. Um, but if you go on a low snowpack year, the water's going to be a little warmer, it's going to be a little bit lower, and you're going to get different photo conditions. So keep that in mind. Also keep that in mind for hiking as well. Um, you can do this hike year round. In the winter, you're going to definitely want a wetsuit. Um, and this hiking guide has been from the bottom up. There, you can also do it from the top down if you want to go canyoneering, bring your ropes and harness and everything. But this is just for the bottom up hike, which is what most people are doing. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys, whether you're a hiker or a photographer or just someone that is looking for cool outdoor content online, I hope it was helpful for you and gave you everything you wanted and more. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Uh, I would love to answer them. Love to hear what you guys think. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for, I kind of look like a fool here. Let me fix that. <laughs> thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video on the ultimate hiking and photography guide here in the Zion subway. What a beautiful area. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.